Taylor Swift has publicly addressed that infamous phone call between her and Kanye West, and now so has Kim Kardashian. The tea is piping hot, you guys. Hey everyone, it's Susan Morad here with Clever News, reporting to you from my at-home studio, doing our part to prevent the spread of coronavirus. Now you guys, yesterday I told you if there were any updates to the Taylor Swift, Kanye West, Kim Kardashian drama, we'll keep you updated. Well, there is a ton of those, so let's jump into the latest tea. As the world patiently waited for Taylor to break her silence, she did it in a way only Taylor Swift would, by bringing awareness to a better cause. Clearly liking some Reddit posts, subtweets, etc. wasn't enough for Tay, she went full blown, I'm gonna address this one head on while bringing attention to a greater cause. Yesterday, during all the commotion that was happening online over the leaked footage, Taylor took to Instagram writing, quote, instead of answering those who are asking how I feel about the video footage that was leaked, proving that I was telling the truth the whole time about that call. You know, the one that was illegally recorded that somebody edited and manipulated in order to frame me and put me, my family and fans through hell for four years. Swipe up to see what really matters. The swipe up page led Instagram users to the Feeding America page, urging her fans to donate to the organization if they were able to do so. And it looks like the leaked video, Taylor's response, and the multiple Swifty comments on Kim's posts was enough to ignite Kim Kardashian to speak out on the matter and defend her and Kanye's actions. In a series of Twitter posts on Monday, Kim tweeted out her side of the story, which started out by Kim calling Taylor self-serving. She wrote, Taylor Swift has chosen to reignite an old exchange that at this point in time feels very self-serving given the suffering millions of real victims are facing right now. Kim continued, I didn't feel the need to comment a few days ago and I'm actually really embarrassed and mortified to be doing it right now. But because she continues to speak on it, I feel I'm left without a choice but to respond because she is actually lying. Okay, first of all, this is getting very intense. I need to do a quick wellness check on everyone. How are you all doing with this back and forth so far? Are you shocked by Kim's claims and responses so far? Comment below and let me know. But there is a lot more, you guys. Also, Taylor's publicist spoke out, and wow, we're going to get to all of that in just a second. But now, back to Kim. She continued her Twitter spree saying, to be clear, the only issue I ever had around the situation was that Taylor lied through her publicist who stated that Kanye never called to ask for permission. They clearly spoke, so I let you all see that. Nobody ever denied the word was used without her permission. She went on with another tweet that read, at the time when they spoke, the song had not been fully written yet. But as everyone can see in the video, she manipulated the truth of their actual conversation in her statement when the team said she declined and cautioned him about releasing a song with such a strong misogynistic message. The lie was never about the word bitch. It was always whether there was a call or not and the tone of the conversation. Kim went on to explain that she never edited the footage saying, I never edited the footage, another lie. I only posted a few clips on Snapchat to make my point and the full video that recently leaked doesn't change the narrative. Clearly the narrative not changing is in Kim's opinion because for many fans who have now seen the longer video, the narrative has changed. Kim then added, to add, Kanye as an artist has every right to document his musical journey and process, just like she recently did through her documentary. Kim then said she recorded the call as part of the documentation process for Kanye and his album saying, Kanye has documented the making of all of his albums for his personal archive, however has never released any of it for public consumption. And the call between the two of them would have remained private or would have gone in the trash had she not lied and forced me to defend him. She ended with saying that she will never touch on this matter again, stating, This will be the last time I speak on this because honestly, nobody cares. Sorry to bore you with all of this. I know you're all dealing with more serious and important matters. As we all know, the Kardashian clan always sticks together, especially while any sort of drama is unfolding, because of course, they're family. Khloe Kardashian took to Twitter to support her sister Kim. She tweeted, I was about to take my ass to sleep, but then I just saw my sister post a couple of tweets, Kimberly, you better. But that wasn't all. Khloe also tweeted a second time saying, Kim is my lawyer for life, my sister and my lawyer. Kendall, who isn't typically as vocal as her big sisters, subtly showed support for Kim by liking her tweets. So it's safe to say which side she is taking. But it doesn't end there, you guys. Taylor's team also spoke out on the matter and the response came amid Kim's tweets. 
In response to Kim's tweet we just discussed where Kim said, quote, Taylor lied through her publicist, Taylor's publicist, Tree Payne, tweeted, quote, I'm Taylor's publicist and this is my unedited original statement. By the way, when you take parts out, that's editing. P.S. Who did you guys piss off to leak that video? With her tweet, Tree Payne attached the original statement she made when the drama went down all those years ago. The full statement read, Kanye did not call for approval, but to ask Taylor to release his single Famous on her Twitter account. She declined and cautioned him about releasing a song with such a strong misogynistic message. Taylor was never made aware of the actual lyric, I made that bitch famous. Whew. Okay, you guys, there is a lot there to unpack. So it's pretty clear despite all the recent developments, both sides to this drama stand by their word and their side of the story. In case you need to be caught up to speed on the background, let's take a little trip back to 2016 when Taylor Swift, Kanye West and Kim Kardashian all made headlines. During a phone call between Taylor and Kanye, Kanye was heard asking Taylor what sounded like permission to use her name in the line of his song Famous. But after the song was released, Taylor said Kanye never asked permission for the line I made that bitch famous. And shortly after, Kim released a shortened version on her Snapchat and now fans have come to know of a much lengthier conversation. Now, the full conversation has actually been leaked, exposing the entire 25 minute long conversation between the two. At one point, Kanye even asks, okay, now that if later in the song, I was also to have said, uh, I made her famous, but he fails to mention what he was planning on calling her. In the full conversation, Taylor can be heard feeling a little uncomfortable as she chatted with Kanye on the other line as he tried to bounce ideas for his song off of her. As he tries to brace her for the line, he eventually reads her the prized song lyric he had come up with saying, quote, I feel like Taylor Swift might owe me sex, but fails to mention what his next line would be. Taylor appeared to be okay with the lyric and even said, I'm glad it's not mean. I thought it was gonna be like that stupid dumb Later, Kanye does finally share the final version of the line that made the song during the call saying, I feel like me and Taylor might still have sex while again leaving out calling her a bitch. And of course, fans on Twitter were thrilled by the news that not only Taylor addressed the scandal, but used her platform to promote something much bigger. One fan wrote, I f***ing love that she used this to promote something to help us all, right? Wow. Another wrote, this just makes me respect her even more. And someone else said, being the bigger person, yas queen. While Taylor has typically had her lips sealed on this specific subject, she did break her silence on social media at the time and tried to clear the air that Kanye and Kim were lying. And as Swifties know, following this turn of events, she slipped away and stayed out of the spotlight for over a year and later emerged with her album Reputation. She said in her statement at the time, where is the video of Kanye telling me he was going to call me that in his song? It doesn't exist because it never happened. While I wanted to be supportive of Kanye on the phone call, you cannot approve a song you haven't heard. But of course, with all the news and developments, fans of Taylor were elated and even started the hashtag Taylor was telling the truth to show their support. One fan wrote, anybody else surprised that Kim and Kanye did this? Not me. And others even started the hashtag Kanye is over party with another fan writing, you all literally canceled Taylor over this and want to switch sides like the damage hasn't already been done. We all knew there was no proof of her approving the second line. This is not news. Kanye has always been a piece of trash. And that my friends is the tea. There is so much here to unpack. I really want to know all of your thoughts on the latest developments. And are you team Taylor? Are you team Kimye? And what's your reasoning? Chat it out right here in the comment section below. And while you're there, be sure to click right over here for yesterday's video for all the updates on the initial part of the story. I'm your host, Susan Morad. Be sure to always hit that subscribe button and hit the bell. Thanks for hanging out with me and I'll catch you later. Bye guys.